You know, any rigid body can be a pendulum. Take this ruler, for instance. If I hang it up and swing it back and forth, it oscillates like a pendulum. While a pendulum with the weight just on the end is called a simple pendulum, one with a mass distribution is called a compound pendulum. But what's the relationship between the frequency of this compound pendulum and a simple pendulum? If they're the same length, the simple pendulum has a much slower period. This is because all of its mass is located down here, whereas this compound pendulum is made up of an infinite number of infinitely small pendulums at each distance along this length. So how do we calculate the equivalent simple pendulum? Let's say we have an arbitrary rigid mass as our compound pendulum. And we'll hang it from right here. And we'll say we know where the center of mass is. Right there. We'll call the distance from the fulcrum to the center of mass, D. Gravity is going to pull down with the weight of the object at its center of mass. So the torque, restoring this to the vertical, is going to be mg d sine theta. And from angular motion, torque equals I alpha. So in the small angle approximation that we always use for pendula, mg d theta equals I theta double dot. The solution to which is a sine with omega root mg d over I. So to find the equivalent simple pendulum, we just look for a simple pendulum with the same omega is just group g over the length of the pendulum. So if we solve this for the length of the pendulum, it's i over md. So if we're looking at a uniform rod, i is one third m l squared, d is one half l, so the center of mass is at the halfway point of the rod, so the equivalent simple pendulum has two-thirds the length of the rod. So if we hang up this simple pendulum at about two-thirds the length of this compound pendulum, they have the same frequency. Now we'll look at rigid body collisions on an air table. By imparting impulses to a similar rod, we can show what happens when we collide along the axis of symmetry, at the length of the equivalent simple pendulum, and at other points along the way. No matter where the rod is hit, the puck imparts momentum to it. However, depending on where it's hit, there are different amounts of torque and spin imparted. You'll notice a collision along the center line imparts no torque. The rod doesn't spin at all. If we hit it close to the middle, but not along the center line, it spins slowly, but every point on it moves forward. A collision at two-thirds of the length, the length of the equivalent simple pendulum, the far point doesn't move instantaneously. The rod rotates about that point, like a pendulum. But at longer timescales, it can't stay stationary, because the rod as a whole had momentum imparted on it. If we hit it near the edge, the far edge actually initially goes backwards. You'll notice that after each collision, the point at the center of mass always moves in a straight line due to the momentum imparted by the impulse. 